tired of long, messy DAX formulas, one word, variable, is going to change everything. If you want to find out how to make your formulas a lot more efficient, watch now. What are variables in DAX? Variables are basically something that allow you to define a piece of a formula with whatever functions you need and reuse that multiple times over and over. In today's video, I'm hoping to show you three ways that variables will really help your practice and when not to use them. Take a look here. I just have a simple visual with total sales and total sales var. All right, VAR stands for variable. Now, total sales here is a measure that I've pre-created and there's really not much to it. It's just the sum of the sales amount, just like any explicit measure you may have created previously. What I did is I also created a total sales in a variable. Here you'll be able to see a little bit of the variable structure. We always start out our variables with VAR. I feel like a pirate. And then we're going to name them and define what they do. One of the pro tips here, a Pragmatic Works pro tip for you, is use this little underscore to name your variables. That is great because when you come back later, you're going to be able to refer to them over and over again. And there's really nothing that's utilizing an underscore, so it's easy to reference them. Here, I said that sales total equals the sum of the sales amount, and then I used return. Every variable that you use is gonna need return. If I don't have return here and I just put sales total, things get a little bit messy because we need to tell the Power BI engine here that it is done and we want to now return something. I don't have to use total sales. I could have a ton of other stuff. I could say total sales times and then I could grab tons of other measures here. I also could do whatever else I needed to after the fact. That variable is a snapshot. It's that moment in time where it's capturing everything, which means that filter context can be a little bit of something to consider when you're working with variables. If this isn't making too much sense, let's flip over to a different example here with some cups of coffee. Now here I've got how many cups of coffee I've had, just one. How many hours of sleep I got? Luckily, I got eight, <laughs> just eight, more than eight, I want more. <laughs> and then meetings today, I've had two meetings. And let's say you want to define a motivation metric. How motivated you are depends on all of these numbers right here. Make sure you slap that like button, subscribe, and hit the bell on our channel. We'll keep you up to date on everything Power BI, Fabric, Copilot, Power Apps, and more. What I could do is start by creating a new measure. So I'm gonna make a new measure and I'm gonna start writing out what does it mean to create my motivation metric. I'm gonna say that motivation is my number of cups of coffee multiplied by five because that's really gonna jazz me up and get me going. And then I'm actually going to add in, so I'll do a plus sign here, the number of hours of sleep. And I'll say that those, I'm really just gonna multiply those by two for that there. By the end of the day, you've had a lot of meetings, you might wanna subtract the number of meetings. Number of meetings today, that is the number we'll subtract and sometimes you can have some pretty bad meetings, so I'm gonna multiply that by three. Then I can let this go ahead and run. My motivation, measure here, I can take and place into my visual and see that I have a motivation score right now of 15. Woo! That's pretty good. But if we think about this here, that could get complicated. It's a simplified example, but maybe I need to reuse cups of coffee, reuse hours of sleep times two, reuse meetings today over and over and over. So what I might do is start to make this in the context of a more awesome variable. So what if my motivation here was not this, but instead I started to define my variables. And I'm gonna go ahead and make some multiple variables here. I'll do that underscore and we'll say cups of coffee. And then I can define what that is. Now I already know that my cups of coffee times five is going to be the score for that. Now I could say cups of coffee or cups of motivation because I know I'm going to be using this in the motivation aspect. I can continue from here with another VAR. And I mentioned hours of sleep. So let's go sleep motivation. 
and then it's gonna be the hours of sleep multiplied by two. I'll keep going here and I'll write out my meetings. And again, I'm simply naming it to the left-hand side and over to the right, I'm defining what the variable is gonna do. Here, I've got my last one, which is my meetings today times three. And then how I'm gonna write this is I'm gonna start with return and write out a little bit more organized and readable the calculation I made for motivation just a moment ago. That one is going to be underscore which allows me to see all of my variables here. Now remember, your variables are localized to this measure. So this is where they exist, this is where they live. So if you go and try and use them in a separate measure somewhere else, you're gonna run into a bit of a headache. So I know that my cups of motivation plus, I'll use the underscore again, see, great tip, instantly see your variables, my sleep motivation, and then I'm going to subtract my meeting motivation. So I'll put that in there, hit enter, and hey, <laughs> we did it. That is absolutely awesome. So let's say you're in the middle of making some really complicated DAX and you're wondering, ah, I know that this calculation might be right, but I'm not sure if the individual parts are doing what they're supposed to. For that reason, what I can do is simply just return one thing at a time. Cups of motivation, well, let's return that and double check that that is actually calculating properly. Cups of motivation here should be one cup of coffee. All right, motivation over here. So one times five. All right, so it looks like our cups of coffee, one times five is the right score here. So we know if that's five, what about hours of sleep times two? We can add on here and continue to debug. So I'm gonna add in my sleep motivation, which should be five plus 16 in this case, since I had eight hours. We're looking for the number 21. Let's do a little validation here and we're set. So this is gonna be a great way to allow you to just debug pieces of this as you're going through it. Once you have that all set up, it's gonna be not only more readable, but allow you to debug what's going on. I wanna flip over to my next page here, which is use question mark. Let's look at a instance where performance might come into play. So you might end up with something kind of like this. I'm actually gonna bring this over. This is called percentage correct. So I'm gonna bring that in. In this case here, we have a divide. We're dividing to get a percentage. Sum X, we're iterating across our fact internet sales table to find order quantity multiplied by the price. And then we're using that furthermore to calculate the same item not affected by product. So we're kind of getting this just general percentage here. Okay, well I have a divide portion here with sum x and sum x with the calculate down below. Each of these elements are pretty similar, order quantity times unit price. And you can actually see here that it's repeating. So performance might be impacted with this particular measure. I could always check performance by going to view and then the performance analyzer. I could record how long these things might be taking. I could refresh visuals and do a side-by-side -side comparison. Also, might go ahead and try to write this out in a variable. And here, I wrote that out with percent wrong. And I'm gonna show you why it's wrong in a moment, but you might already tell that the numbers here are a bit off. Let me go to percent wrong here. If you look at this here, well, you're using a variable for sum x, order quantity, and the unit price. Makes sense, right? I'd reuse that variable in the next calculation. And simply, I'm doing basically what was in the other measure that was a lot more elongated. I'm dividing sales amount to the sales amount sans dim product. Now, this is where filter context enters the conversation. So you might notice here in our visuals, we've got percent correct and percent correct wrong. Think of it like you have a piece of cake. And for you, that's your piece of cake. It's one out of one. It's the piece. It's right in front of you. Whereas the other measure here, the percent correct, we're realizing that our piece of cake is actually part of a much larger cake. The reason that this is happening within these two calculations is we have one that is repeating 
sum x and the calculate all together like you see here. And even though it might feel inefficient, it's actually getting the right filter context at play. Here in the calculate sum x with all, it's able to actually assess that larger cake, whereas our variable can't. Remember earlier in the video, I said variables are kind of like a snapshot. And in some cases like this measure here, that snapshot is looking at that single piece of cake again, even in the next piece. Because of that, that's why we're going to get this 100%. It's our piece of cake. It's all we see. We're kind of like a horse with blinders. That's all there is. If we take those off, we can see the entirety of the birthday party and everybody has a piece of cake. And we know that our slice is one, you know, 10% of 100, just like the percent correct here. Because variables are a snapshot, we find that if I'm using this variable here, I might even get performance enhancements. But if you look at return, divide sales amount, calculate sales amount, it's thinking like that one singular piece, and therefore it does not have the proper filter context. Now, there's a couple of ways that you might get around this by leveraging where you collect the variable within calculate. Is it within calculate? Is it outside of calculate? If it's outside of calculate, what you're going to find it is fixed at that point. When it's inside of calculate, we might actually see it come across in that filter. Not always the case there. So I want you to remember that you should be leveraging variables. They're great. You would not believe how many times we get questions related to this exact same thing. Sometimes the solution is wrap it in a variable or don't do it. <laughs> this often happens in our virtual mentoring sessions here at Pragmatic Works. If you are having some problems with your DAX, you're not seeing the whole piece of the cake, the true filter context, definitely check out our virtual mentoring where you and I can work together one-on-one -on -one and build a solution together. And it's going to be a great learning experience that you can take and use over and over again. Thanks everybody for working with variables in DAX today. My name is Greg Treziak, and I'll see you back here on the Pragmatic Works YouTube channel.